Welcome to Big Bites with Caroline Collins. I'm serving up deep conversations with influential people. My hope is to leave you feeling inspired and motivated. Now let's dig in. Hi, friends. Before I get into this week's episode with the amazing Heather Abraham of KDK in Pittsburgh, I wanted to just show you guys, if you're watching me on YouTube, that my eye, my eye right here, my left eye, it's fine. I have recovered. When I was recording the episode with her, I had pink eye and I actually had to take a day off of work because it's highly contagious and I looked like I had got punched in the face. So I didn't address it during our recording because I didn't think it would be that noticeable. And then I watched it back and I was like, oh man, yeah, I'm going to have to tell you guys what was going on that day. So if you are watching this on YouTube with the video, I hope you enjoy my disgusting looking eye. And if you're listening, it's probably better that way. All right. I hope you enjoy this amazing conversation that we had with Heather. I had so much fun with her. Enjoy. All right, Heather Abraham from KDKA in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Big Bites podcast. This is a this is an honor and so thrilling for me to be part of this. No, this is a, an honor for me because when I was a college student in Pittsburgh watching the news, I was always looking at you and I looked up to you so much. And then I became an intern and I was like, oh my gosh, there's, there's Heather, there's Heather, there she is. <laughs> well, and now I look to you because you have just, you've grown in so many tremendous ways. And I just, I applaud you so much to find your strengths and embrace them and grow the way you are. Oh my gosh. I was so excited when you, we've followed each other on Instagram and social media for a while now. So when you reached out to me, just you know, saying like, oh, good job and keep it up. And we kind of talked about social media a little bit. I was like, you would be the perfect episode for oh my, my podcast gosh. that I'm launching. So I am so honored to have you here. And I'm, so, and I'm literally so excited. Every time I talk to you or like watch anything on social media, you bring such just a positive energy. Oh. And that's what I'm going for here. And I just, I'm so excited. That's wonderful what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, let's talk about you. Um, so you, let's go back to the, well, let's tell people what you're doing. So right now, you host the Pittsburgh Today Live and then a newer yep. show called Talk Pittsburgh on KDK. Yeah, and who knew that would be so <laughs> challenging to get off the ground? I had no idea. I mean, I've never been part of a process to launch an entirely new show, but it's an undertaking. I will say it's been very oh, consuming, but awesome I too. Yeah, yeah. When, back when I was in an intern at KDK, Christine Sorensen was doing Pittsburgh Today Live and you've, you took it over and launched a new show. I remember um, when I came here and I started to, you know, really watch some of our other programming, I told our producer at the time for Pittsburgh Today Live, her name was Jill Neely. I don't know if you remember Jill, if she was here when you interned. I do. Jill was here. Yeah. So I told Jill, I said, my goal is to host Pittsburgh Today Live. Like, that's what I would like to do. And, you know, at the time... It, I say this knowing that I was never in a position or would never be in a position to push someone out of what they were doing. You know, I, I adored Christine's job and what she was um, able to do on the show, but I just knew if there was ever an opportunity where I could join that I would love to do it. So the time came um, and it was so funny because I was just coming back from maternity leave with my second baby and uh, and I was stopped in the hall by my boss at the time and he was like, hey, I want to talk to you about something. Um, we, we'd like you to take over PTL. And I was like, what? Wow. Like, dreams coming true. Fireworks, yeah. like the whole thing. So That's yeah. And now, um, now you have uh, three, three. Three. Oh my gosh. How That's do I do it? I don't know. I know. I, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, well, I want to circle back to this in a couple of minutes, but I want to start like from the beginning, beginning, because you grew up um, outside of Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, I grew up in Shaler, Pennsylvania. So it's uh, Shaler Township. It's it's not far from here, from the, from the city center of downtown Pittsburgh. Um, we're about 20 minutes outside the city. Uh, I went to Shaler High School and then later to West Virginia University, where I studied broadcast news. I was one of those kids in high school that didn't have a true passion or calling. I wasn't a cheerleader because I couldn't make the squad because I couldn't remember the dances. Uh, I applied <laughs> all of the TikTokers who can remember dances that quickly because I can't get it. I know, um, right? So, I, but I wasn't part of anything. And a, a friend of mine in high school stopped me and he asked if, uh, if I could help them out with their um, Friday football night show. And I was like, yeah, sure. It sounds like fun. 
And I fell in love with the whole process, everybody behind the scenes, how it worked. It was, it just felt like a fun club to be part of. And it was how I fell in love with broadcasting. That's awesome. So then how did you go from high school to deciding what college you were going to go to and majoring in broadcast? Or did you major in broadcast journalism? I did. And I was trying to find schools close to home because I, I don't know about you. It was just so scary to leave the nest for me. And so I was trying to find somewhere that wasn't terribly far. And, uh, and so I, I, it, I went to a couple different campuses that had a broadcasting um, major specifically, because a lot of them had communications at the time, but not broadcasting. And I went to WVU and thank God I did because that's where I met my husband. So it just, Oh my you know, gosh. Yeah. So it just, things happen for a reason. I truly believe that. Well, what, where is your, is your husband from Pittsburgh? He is from West Virginia. And oh. it's funny because he didn't even start at WVU. He started somewhere else and then went into the Air Force and then ended up at WVU. So our paths kind of collided and crossed and uh, and I'm so glad that they did. Okay, that's crazy. I'm interested to hear how this all worked when you moved for your first job. Oh my gosh, right? Because do you remember those first jobs? They were so, yeah. But um, you moved to a really big city, right? Yeah, so I, I worked at News 12, but he was the main reason I ended up in New York because, oh really? Um, he, yeah, because his sister and uh, brother-in-law lived in Staten Island in New York, and he decided that he was going to try and be a firefighter with the FDNY, and so he moved there so he could get his residency, and he was working on that. And I can't remember the requirements at the time for residency, but he moved there to get his residency so he could take the test, and uh, and it was soon after that I came to work at News 12 Brooklyn and we moved in together and like you know when things are just right you just know yes. it. you don't even you don't even overthink it you just do it it was just we just did it that's crazy so that was your first news market after you graduated and it was um we were one man bands at the time I know the name has changed but MMJ MSJ yeah. it's essentially for people who don't know the business it's essentially that you're doing it all you do everything and my one cautionary tale of doing this, where I, I feel like I learned so many life lessons that day, I had to cover a protest. Uh, and they were going to cover, they were going to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. My mistake in reading the information was that they were, I thought they were walking from Brooklyn to Manhattan. They were walking from Manhattan to Brooklyn. So I parked on the Brooklyn side of the Brooklyn Bridge and realized quickly my mistake. And I had to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge in heels and with my tripod and my camera and like all of the things. Oh yeah. my gosh. Was, Were you, that is, I can't imagine. Like it was stressful being in MMJ in Youngstown, Ohio. And you're literally doing this in Brooklyn, New York. It was a lot, but you, I think you have to look at life and it's hard to do it when you're in the middle of it, but you have to look at it like life is giving you lemons and you have to decide how it's going to, to work out. Like, are you making lemonade or are you not? And I think I'd like to think that I made lemonade. They were really hard life lessons. You, yes, you absolutely right? did. Okay. So after, so how long were you in New York? In Brooklyn we were there. Uh, so it was just about five years. So you did that job for five years. Oh yes. my gosh. And there's this point when you're doing a really hard job, especially right out of college, I think there's this point where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be doing this forever. Is no one else going to hire me? Am I not good enough to go anywhere else? And thankfully, thankfully, someone took a shot on me in Pittsburgh. Like, I'm so thankful for that. That is so awesome. Now, did you like, did you have internships in Pittsburgh? What were your connections like that were able to kind of get you in an interview, get you in the door? It was, it's funny because I, I did have, um, I did some meet and greets. Um, so nobody was hiring at the time, but I, I just wanted to get my foot in the door. So we did a couple meet and greets and I won't say where or who, but I did speak with someone in, in Pittsburgh who was like, mm, have you tried Erie? Have you tried working there? Cause I just don't think you're ready for Pittsburgh. And I was thinking I've been busting my tail in New York city of all places. Like I know I'm ready to come back home. I know I can do this job. Um, and then I was really lucky. I had, I had uh, met with the assistant news director at the time here at KDKA, Ann Lineberger. And when she became the news director, she remembered and we asked her, you know, if there were any openings, I was able to come in and interview and got the job shortly after. 
Oh my gosh. That must have felt like such a homecoming moment. It was incredible. It was really, because again, when you're, when you're doing something that is so hard, you think this is going to be forever for me. So to know that things were changing and, and I don't know that my hard work was paying off. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was everything. Well, for people who might not like understand how these like news markets work and how you were like in Brooklyn, New York at News 12, can you just like kind of like explain that and like how your move to Pittsburgh, like even though you were in New York City, like this really was a huge, huge move to Pittsburgh? Right. Because some people might think, wait yeah. a minute, you were in New York. Yeah. Why would you want to leave there? Right. It, I, to me, I think it's personal choice too, because I had friends who stayed in New York, who we, you know, who worked with me at News 12 and their goal was not to leave New York. They wanted to stay. Um, for me, I, we didn't leave our neighborhood in Brooklyn. We lived in Bay Ridge. And so we stayed in this like small little three block radius. We went to the Kettle Black that was our local bar. I had a nail salon right across the street. We had uh, our grocery store right down the street. We had, um, oh my gosh, there was this great like discount shop and I cannot remember the name of it, but it was like this massive Mm -hmm. um, home goods slash Marshalls with, it was a different name, but it was like two stories and three buildings. It was so, so we, we didn't leave this little pocket of our neighborhood. And, um, and for me, I was like, I don't think I'm a big city girl. I think I'm, you know, a small city or like big town kind of girl. Yeah. And so for, so for me, it was just more personal choice. I knew if I came back home, I could put roots in and make, and, and make life for myself here. It's so funny that you said that because now I'm in Houston and sometimes I feel like I, I, I work like so close and then yeah. everything I need is right here. It's like such a weird thing. I'm like, I don't even have to leave the bubble, but I hate to even say this. We never went to see the Statue of Liberty while we lived there. Oh I could, my god! I could see it, you know. So, like, when you live yeah, somewhere, totally. you don't take it's advantage so of the things, these beautiful things that your city has to offer. But you're driving, and you're like, "Oh, there's a Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Oh, cool. Maybe we'll check it out one day." Totally. What? Well, um, people always think if you can drive in New York City, like you can drive anywhere, you know. But I think Pittsburgh. <laughs> the driving in Pittsburgh is like literally more chaotic than anywhere. Like all the tunnels and stuff. It's so crazy. So you move back to Pittsburgh and you get hired at KDKA and you started as a reporter. I started as a morning reporter, and I don't know if you ever did mornings. Did you? You did mornings for a little while. I just right? did mornings for two years in Fresno, California. <sighs> so I know. And I'm sure you've talked about this before, but for people who don't understand, you are literally waking up when the bars are closing. So, you know, you're, you're waking I was waking up at 2.15 mm-hmm. in the morning um, to come into work. And it was just such a grind, a, yeah. such a grind. I, I was uh, reporting and then I was offered um, the anchoring slot on the morning after about 10 years, uh, seven years, seven years here. Yeah. And um it was still even morning anchoring. I was still waking up at the same time. It's, it's a grind. It is. And once you get sick, like you can't get better. I felt like it just takes such a toll on your body. Yeah. Yeah. So you started as a reporter and then you moved on to the anchor desk. Yeah. And in that span, um, I had all three of my babies on the morning shift. Yes. Um, my first one, I was still reporting in the field and I, I don't know how deep you want to go if these are, this is like TMI, but I remember I was still, I'm still nursing when I got back to work. I had only at the time, our policy only allowed three months off. So I was off for three months. Um, my baby was not sleeping. Colic. Lila was, you know, just one of those babies who was just needed to be held. And, um, so we weren't sleeping. I was still getting up at two o'clock in the morning And I had to pump while I was on the road in the live truck. So we would be going to breaking news. And I was sitting there with the generator on so that I could plug in my pump, pumping, trying to cover myself, looking up facts about breaking. It was like, there was just no time to, I don't know, fully put everything into one thing. You're just trying to multitask this whole time. That is unbelievable but so believable at the same time because I've heard stories from so many moms who work in our business that are similar to that like there is no mercy in this field I feel there really isn't I mean it's it's what we sign up for every yeah. every job has its thing and you, you make it work if you want to do it and you love the job you make it work um for us like And that wasn't every day. There were just some instances where you're out at your location. I had my very specific pump time, which was like 7 a.m. And then you get breaking news and you have to go. And you're like, oh, I don't know what, 
can you leave the generator on? Let's just go. <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh. That you're literally a super mom. Like that is, that is so crazy. I, I can't even imagine. Like that's just so wild. One and thing about parenting is that you do what you have to do. You just do it. Wow. And now you have three. And so, okay. So when you were anchoring the morning show though, you were still getting up at weird hours, right? Yeah. Um, so through, through all of that, still waking up at two fifteen, and then there was a point in time and this was not that long ago where I was anchoring and doing PTL. So I was still morning anchoring and then I would switch hats and shift over it into, um, Pittsburgh today live, which is our morning lifestyle show. It's a super fun show. Um, and it, it, but during the pandemic was when it proved to me to be one of the hardest times you spend three hours in the morning reporting on some really hard stuff in the middle of the pandemic. And, and then I would have to switch hats all of a sudden and be this bubbly lighthearted. And we had agreed on PTL. We wanted this to be an hour of safe space for people. Like we were mm -hmm. only going to do positive lighthearted stuff to really give people a break. For me, I felt it was so polarizing doing these two things, you know, and having to switch my mindset so yeah. quickly. It just felt, it was really hard. It was really challenging. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because you go, I mean, the news that we cover in the morning and at night, it's tough. Like a lot of breaking news, a lot of bad things. And then, yeah, there's like switch gears into like all the fun, happy, amazing things Pittsburgh has to offer. I could see how that could be challenging. So when did it, when did this change that now you're all PTL and this new show? Yeah. So um, we had been talking for a while about trying to do something to kind of extend some of that fun that we were doing on Pittsburgh Today Live. And so we really um, like this idea of doing an interview format style show, kind of like a talk show, but still incorporating some lifestyle stuff too. Um, so we started March 20th, actually, of uh, 2023. We launched our show, Talk Pittsburgh. And um, and there was a lot of planning leading up to it. I had to step away temporarily from the anchor desk with the show not off the ground yet. So there, I had to take a chance on it. You know, we if things fell apart in the middle of our planning, then I would have given up anchoring and just doing PTL. Yeah. So, oh but gosh. you have to believe in the process and trust in the process. And, uh, you know, very fortunate to have great bosses who were like, this is happening. We're doing this. Like, step away and let's focus our attention on this. So we dove in and uh, like I told you, it, it's, I, I didn't realize how much went into launching an entire new show. So for people who don't know TV, there are things that you don't see that are going on. Multiple meetings about what our graphics are gonna look like, what the logo is gonna look like, the layout of the set, what set pieces we're gonna use. Um, the lighting needs to be adjusted. You, I mean, teases, promotion, yeah. opens, all of this stuff that needs to happen. It's so time consuming. And it's not all done right the first time. So you have to go back to the drawing board. And do you have a co-anchor on that show? Yes. So um, we we started off with just a, a single host show. But I don't think the intention was ever to be just me. Um, I I am not one of those people that needs the spotlight just on me. I think that as a whole, people work better when we're working with each other. And so um, just, a, just a couple um, weeks ago, uh, we brought on some new faces. So Kelly, who is a radio host here in Pittsburgh, she joined. And um, Mikey Hood, who's been a big part of Pittsburgh Today Live, has also joined. And we have a friend, Boaz Frankel, who is this massive personality who also joined us. And so we're really able to, to do these wonderful interviews, these deeper topics, and have some fun, too, on the show. That's awesome. And that, what time does that come on? That comes on at three o'clock on KDK okay. in the afternoons. Yeah. And then PTL is on at what time? In the nine a.m. So it's oh on at nine a.m. on KDK. Ooh, busy day. So how are you feeling now that you have more normal hours? I truly feel one rested, uh, at least as as much as I can be. Yeah. With a busy know, with home life too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I, I, ha I feel like I have finally found myself. Like I'm doing what I should be doing. So all of it is kind of clicking. All of it's coming together. And there was, like I said before, there's, there's some hard parts in life, but it's all a journey. And I feel like that journey has led me to where I am right now. And it just feels so right. 
Well, and you gain so much credibility, I feel, being out in the field and reporting on such hard things and then going to the anchor desk. Like people in Pittsburgh really know you and they really trust you. And now to be able to do something that's a little bit more fun and lighthearted, I, but I think you need that. I think you need to grind it out first, right? And like make a name for yourself, which you did. You know, you said something to me the other day, and this is kind of how I feel too. You love talking to people. Right. And so whether you're out at a community event and you're just listening to things that people are telling you, they want to share their stories. And I, I hate that journalists get such a bad rap because at the end of the day, our job is really to tell other people's stories. Mm -hmm. um, and and I don't know, I just I find that I really enjoy talking to people and listening to people. And so it's all kind of coming together that started with journalism, that started with me anchoring and reporting and getting to know people in the community. And now I'm able to use all of those connections, all of those relationships that we've built up to be able to do this now. I love that. How has it impacted being a mom at home? And how has it impacted your relationship with your husband being that now you're not waking up in the middle of the night and you're home at more normal hours? It's it, So the one benefit and the reason why this worked for so long is that I was home at noon so even though I was really tired, there was a physical person at the house from noon until bedtime. Um, so there was actually some adjusting in getting used to me not being home so much because now mm -hmm. the waking hours, like I'm gone longer. Uh, but the kids are in school now. And so they're gone during the same hours that I'm gone. And uh, one of the first times I realized it was when I went to Target at seven o'clock at night. Now that may not seem like a big deal. But when you're doing mornings, there are no errands at seven o'clock at night. At seven o'clock at night, your brain is mush. Yeah. And, and so I think being able to do more activities and go to practices with the kids and pick them up and drop them off, like all of that stuff, I think, has made me a more present mom for them. Oh, and I bet, is it, do you wake up with them now in the morning? Because what time do you have to be into work now? Yeah, that would be nice. So, I'm, I come in anywhere between seven and eight in the morning. And, um, and my husband is such a champ. Like he, for the last, however many, well, our daughter's nine now, um, for the last nine years has gotten them ready and gotten them out the door and to school. Now I'm able to wake up with them and do my daughter's hair. Like I love Aww. that. I love being able to curl their hair in the morning or braid their hair in the morning. Yeah. Or, you know, that's that sort of stuff I missed out on for nine years. So I'm so glad that I'm able to do that now. What are your kids' ages? Nine and then seven and four. Oh my gosh. So you were in the thick of it. I, yeah. And I were kind of, I think we're, we're coming out of the really hard part. We're going to have this sweet like little chunk of time and then our oldest is going to be a teenager so I think we we had like this like maybe couple oh of years gosh. yeah where we could actually do things and it's not going to be as hard we're not changing diapers anymore everybody's sleeping through the night um no tantrums uh -huh. for the most part but yeah <laughs> well I'm sure especially in Pittsburgh a lot of women look to you as a mom that's like really doing it all the career it seems like you have a social life because you're involved so much in the community. You have the kids, the husband. I mean, how do you do it all? Or what, like, what do you say to other women that are like, you know, in the thick of it and probably stressed and tired and sleep deprived? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I truly don't. I think that everybody's situation is so unique to them. I feel very fortunate that I have um, a partner in life that is truly a partner. We, we don't have, I don't know, like he's not the, Oh, I'm going to work and you're going to take care of the home. Mm -hmm. Like we truly split everything 50, 50. Um, we take equal responsibility and equal roles in our house. And for me, I'm so grateful for, for our family that we have that system in place, you know, and that we can lean on each other. And yeah. like, your husband has like a crazy job though. Cause he's, he works for the fire department, right? He's a firefighter. Yes. Well, right. And so that's like full circle. I forgot to mention that part because <gasps> that's what drew us to New York City was that he wanted to be a firefighter. And things kind of fell in place when we got to Pittsburgh because he was able to get on the fire department here. And um, so he's been a firefighter for, oh, it's been about 10 years that he's been on the fire department here. Um, but he, yeah, so his job is crazy too because he works 24 hours on, three days off. 
Wow. So he's home a lot, but when he's gone, he's gone and he's doing something potentially dangerous. Um, yeah, but I don't know how you stay because I, I, you know, watched a lot of your content and in one of the videos that you have on Katie K's website, it like you talked a little bit about how like he got injured and you were so scared. And that's a, that's just a stressful job in a completely different way than our jobs. And, you know, it's your husband. I, gosh, that adds a whole other stress. So he, um, it was Lila, my oldest, she was a year and a half and, um, we, yeah, I was, I was on my way to work. It was new year's day. I had done our big new year's celebration here in Pittsburgh is called first night. And so I, I had done the coverage with David Highfield for new year's Eve and I was working a different shift new year's day. So I got to sleep in a little bit. I was coming in a little bit later in, in the day and I got a text from my assistant news director, um, and she said, is Frankie okay? And I said, yeah, he's at work, but he's, he's fine. I didn't realize what was going on, but there was a huge house fire with entrapment. They knew an older woman was stuck in the house. And so the firefighters went in and um, anyone who, who knows about fires, there's something really dangerous that happens. It's called a flashover. And they had one in the house and uh, they were essentially trapped. They were able to find a window to get out of, but fires are not like what you see on TV or in the movies. It's pitch black. So you are walking into something, someone's house you've never been in before, um, and you can't see anything. They were able to find a window in the home. My husband crawled out, and the rest of the firefighters who were in that same space with him started to crawl out on him. And as they did this, he fell and fell on his back and broke one of his vertebrae. And... Um, so, of course, like, I finally get a call from, and this was all in the span of a couple of minutes that I'm finding this out from the text from my boss to a call from the fire department. And they said, Frankie's at the hospital. He's okay. But, um, there, you know, he fell. And so I got there and I just, I mean, I could cry right now thinking about, because, oh. you know, we had a young baby. We were trying to get pregnant with our second at the time. And um, and I just kept thinking, like, he might never walk again. He's He's alive. But my first thought was, you know, his life could be completely altered on this day. Oh my gosh. So it was really scary. We got very lucky. Um, the fire, there were seven firefighters hurt that day. My husband being one of them. Um, he still to this day has some back pain because of the, the vertebrae fracture, but he was very lucky, very, very lucky that day. Oh my gosh. And so then yeah. he had to recover probably for a while and yeah. thank God he yeah. did. I saw I got pictures of him like in yeah. the brace and stuff. I oh know. my gosh. Yeah, that was a tough Thank time goodness. for him. I know. I know. It was really scary. So there was a time after where I kind of had, I mean, he was home for, I think, probably about eight months and he was able to get back to work. It was a goal of his. He did not want to have this be a career ender for him. So we worked really hard wow. to get back to the, the job. Um, but he, I, there was a some time after where anytime there was a fire, I was very anxious. Yeah. You know, I, you yeah. I mean, anyone would be, that's, and yeah. in, in the news, like you hear it all, like, you know, when big right. fires are happening, which is like, it's just, it, yeah, that's so wild. But the way that you guys like, thank God he recovered and you guys make it work so well with the kids and you're such a star in Pittsburgh and so well known. I think it's just so cool. Like the firefighter and the news anchor, like what a story, <laughs> you know, like how cute. <laughs> well, I feel like a lot of people in our business wind up marrying first responders. I don't know why yeah. that is. Like first responders <laughs> or politicians. I feel like it's something like that it always happens. happens. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a good source too that you have. A little inside <laughs> yeah. tip, you know, for all the things going on in Pittsburgh. That's right. That's, That's right. what's hardest about moving to a new city. It's like you lose all your sources. It's like you work so hard to like build up all these sources and then you start in a new city from nothing. From nothing. Yeah. I know. You know, I, I read a lot about, you know, people um, who – who are leaving big cities and really ending up in, in these smaller cities or big towns, like I mentioned, just because it's, you can, you can really grow yourself. You can be like a big fish in a small pond kind of thing. Yeah, no, definitely. And Pittsburgh just, it's will forever be my, one of my favorite cities, oh. like going to college there was so much fun. And like my family's always been Pittsburgh fans and Nowhere else in the country do you have like the whole city turn to black and gold and support the teams. Like it's very right. unique. And I didn't realize that because I grew up with this. And then it's like, yeah, we have passionate people 
you know, in Houston, but it's such a massive city that it, the whole city does not turn like black and gold, nor are all of our sports teams the same color. So it's just such a unique city, you know? Well, you even see it on Sundays, like yeah. Sundays, you know, at church, yeah. people will wear their jerseys to church. It, that's and it's know. acceptable and it's, it's, it's <laughs> totally allowed. I mean, it's totally allowed. I love it. So now that you're like, in this role of Pittsburgh Today Live and Talk Pittsburgh, I mean, what like what is next? Where do you go? Like to, to a lot of people, like you have it all. You have the husband, the beautiful kids, and this amazing job. I don't know what's next. I don't. I don't really believe in necessarily like setting these big ambitious goals. I think there's so much that's out of our control. You have no idea what's going to come your way next. So I think that we can we can tackle what we think is going to be right for us. But at the end of the day, you just have to leave the doors open and just kind of see what comes your way. Um, I can't wait to grow Talk Pittsburgh even more. I'm really excited. It's still in its infancy, just a year in. So I'm really excited to see where we can take it in this next year. Um, I love doing Pittsburgh Today Live. It's, it is just a joy to me. And like I said, it was a dream to be able to join the team there. So I don't know what's next. We're in the process of moving. That's been really chaotic. Oh, like mo- <laughs> moving houses? <gasps> yes. Oh, yes. that is chaotic. Oh, my gosh. It is not for the faint of heart. It is a lot of work. I, I never anticipated. People have said it's one of the most stressful things that can happen in life, but I didn't realize how stressful it would be with all of the stuff we've accumulated over 13 years in our home. I bet. It's are you lot. staying in the same area or are you? We are. We're moving. Uh, we're moving just a little south of the city and- I keep hearing from, you were mentioning drivers. The one thing that I keep hearing about from people is, are you worried about the commute? Are you worried about how long the commute's going to be? Oh, no. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like this is, it'll, it'll be my me time to listen to podcasts yeah. or, you know, yeah, do something like fun. when this podcast comes That's out. Right. Yes, we get, totally. I love that. <laughs> um, I want to let people know how to follow you on social media, though, and how to follow the shows that you're on. Yeah. So you can follow, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram and uh, I'm on Facebook. Are we just still doing Facebook? Do we still do Facebook? Yeah. I do. Facebook I don't know what the day. rules are. Do you really every yeah. day? I every just don't know. Like, I completely missed the Vine era. Like I just didn't even yeah. know it was around, you know, just completely missed it. Um, so yeah, you can look me up <laughs> on Instagram. It's Heather Abraham, KDKA. Um, I'm on TikTok. I don't know what my name is on TikTok, but it's Heather Abraham. You'll think, see me. Yeah, no, I think it is because I think <laughs> I, I just like saw you on there. And, you know, social media has truly changed like the whole journalism game in our careers. It, it, it like it, it really is crazy. But I love that that's been a way like I have been able to keep up with you all these years. And now like through social media, this is kind of how we're talking right now, you know? It's so smart. In so many of our, both Pittsburgh Today Live and Talk Pittsburgh, and so many of the segments that we're doing, we're showcasing some of the amazing content creators out there. Mm-hmm. And these are thoughts and ideas and things that maybe you've never thought of before, or, you know, just comments or discussions that have been sparked on social media. I feel like I've been able to make so many new connections through social media and highlighting some of these videos too. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's a really fun world if you can dive into it. It is. Are you going to let your kids be on it? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. And, and I say this because we, my husband wants um, our oldest, he said that she could get a phone at 10. I'm kind of reluctant to let that happen because I still think the online bullying is just so present. It's, it, it is a thing. I just don't, I don't want my kids to be involved in it on either side in any way. I know. I always think like if I had kids, what would I do? Would I try to be like, look, social media is a portfolio to showcase like what you're good at or interested in. It is not to be talking to strangers or to be posting anything that any like future job or school could see. Like how do you, and and how do you explain that to such like a young person? person. That's just like a whole episode in its own. <laughs> it is. It is. The really, I mean, you could talk about it for hours, truthfully. So I just, I don't know what the right call is. I've heard from some people who allowed their kids to have phones, but not social media until they were 18. I, I don't know if a full blanket prohibition on it is ever going to work because you need them yeah. to navigate those waters too. Yeah. But I don't know. I know. It's like, it's such a scary space. I can't imagine. And then on top of like 
covering all this news. It's like, oh my gosh, like how could I bring kids into this world? But I hope to, okay. I hope one day I get to do that. I'm sure that you will. I mean, if, if that's something you choose to do, I, yeah. it's the most beautiful thing we've ever done and the hardest thing we've ever done. Um, and it's totally a choice that you'll make for yourself when the time comes. Yeah. It's so crazy. But you, you guys, people like you and all that you're doing, make it seem like it's doable and worth it. So I'm so glad to, to know you and just to be able to have this conversation with you. I, Seriously, thank you so much. Like Aww. this podcast isn't even out yet. And Heather was like, I'm coming on, you know, like, let's do it. Let's talk. Sign me up anytime. It's oh like talking gosh. to your girlfriend. Yes, I love it. It's like a girlfriend hour. Well, I appreciate it so much, Heather. Make sure to follow her on all social platforms and check out all the shows that she's doing in Pittsburgh. Heather, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on Big Bites. Make sure to like and subscribe to the podcast so I can keep these inspirational and motivating conversations going. I love having you here and remember, you deserve a seat at the table.